everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 473. Today we're going to talk about liberty or death, the American insurrection, uh, otherwise known as the Revolutionary War. Uh, this is a coin game. This is now the fifth coin game in the series. Started off with Andy Nabis, most recently was Fire in the Lake. And like this says, this takes place during the American Insurrection. Uh, players will be taking control of four different factions in this game, just like all the other coin systems. If you're not familiar with coin, it's kind of a war game and kind of a political area control type of game. Uh, so in this particular game, there'll be a British player, there will be a Patriots or the Americans, and there'll also be the Native Americans or the Indians, and there'll also be the French. And so each player will take on the role of those factions, and each has a different win condition and also relatively different mechanics for what they can do. So each uh, faction has four kind of basic mechanics that you can kind of augment with special abilities, but there's also going to be a deck of event cards that players are sort of reacting and responding to uh, that's unlike, you know, most event decks in other games. So let's take a look at how this works. If you're familiar with the coin system, this is very much in that vein, although there are some significant differences in terms of the mechanics themselves and also how the game kind of plays out. But I'll leave that to the review part. Let's talk a little bit about how it works. I'm not going to get too crazy in the detail because the video would be like an hour long probably uh, because there's lots of kind of rules, exceptions, and things like that typical of a lot of war games and coin games. Uh, so let's jump in and then I'll tell you what I think of it. Okay, so here's everything that you get in Liberty or Death. I don't have any pieces on the board because it kind of is hanging off the table here. Uh, I didn't realize how big this map actually is. I haven't actually set up on this table yet. I do want to zoom in though, a little component note, and take a look at this map. The map is gorgeous, I think. I think uh, this is probably the prettiest coin map. Uh, you've got nice trees and, you know, nice little kind of exploded views of the city. I like the kind of little ornate control and uh, population markers and so on. Now, they also has a little bit of a naval aspect to the game. The French player might actually be putting out uh, these blockade markers and they'll start to kind of pinch off or squeeze off supply uh, for the British player if they control these different cities. You can see these here with the number uh, in yellow. And there's also going to be some uh, vying for control and battles that happen here in the West Indies. It's kind of abstracted here. Uh, the, the British and the French can actually send troops down here and so this is going to very much dictate how much the French actually get involved uh, in the game. Uh, the only other thing probably to note here is this uh, continental line here. Uh, you can see if we take a zoom in there on the northwest space up there, that number there is in black. Uh, these are sort of like native lands to the Native Americans out this side over here. They're going to be able to more easily, uh, you know, get their uh, war parties out and so on in these spaces over here. But you'll notice there's no uh, lines of communication or anything quite like that. Although, the, like I said, the naval aspect kind of gives you a way to sort of jump and travel from city to city. Now, if the French ever get their French naval intervention up to three here, then that will actually eliminate that action. It's called a garrison action, so you can jump around. So kind of think of that if you played other uh, coin games as sort of your lines of uh, communication there. So here we can see some of the cards that come in the game. And if you're not familiar with the coin game, uh, definitely go watch my, one of my other reviews. But the idea is that you'll have a deck of these cards, and this is the order that the factions will get to operate. So in this case, maybe Britain, French, Native Americans, and then Patriots. And Or if this card was came up, then it would be a little bit different order. It would be Native Americans, Patriots, British, and French. And so you have the option to, as the star player, to get to activate maybe one of these two possible events. You have sort of a non-shaded and then a shaded area. Or you can do one of your normal actions. Now, one thing that's different about this compared to some of the other corn games is you can actually see here the years on the upper left-hand corner there. So this is 79 and 80 and so on. Now, you could just shuffle everything together, and I don't think it would actually be bad if you did that. I haven't tried that. But you can go through based on the scenario and take a certain amount of cards out of each of the different decks and then build them. So you're going to take... Uh, and build them in kind of in sections. So you're going to take 10 cards, say of the 77, 78, and then you're going to shuffle in these winter quarter cards into those 10. Uh, now these are kind of like the propaganda cards in the other coin series, uh, but they work differently. Now you don't just shuffle this anywhere randomly inside each group of 10. You actually shuffle it together with the bottom four cards. So you are always going to have 
some kind of delay before you get to this triggering the winter quarters you can it's a little bit more predictable <laughs> but when this comes up you can actually see it says in the card here when this card is turned up stop swap this card with the played card and conduct winter quarters immediately now the rules do give you a variant to not play that way you can actually wait and see it on top of the deck know that it's coming everybody else can do you know a limited action there uh I haven't tried that. I've tried it with just the rules as written, and I like that a lot because it's a little bit more of a surprise. You know that it's coming. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. Okay, we got through five cards in this deck. We know it's somewhere in these next, you know, four cards here, and it's going to come up. But when exactly it's going to come up, you're not exactly sure. And when it comes up, it just happens. There's nothing you can do about it, which makes a little bit more sense. Because if you think about it, like, you know, wintering, you know when winter is coming, but you're not really sure if it's November or December, you know. So, and the other thing that's interesting about this is you actually have these little triggers on here. So this says actually reduce the larger of the, and this is the casualties, the CRC and the CBC. So this is the re rebellion casualties or the British casualties by half the difference running down. So you take whoever's currently winning a little bit and reduce it down a little bit during uh, the different steps that'll happen in the winter quarter phase. And there's all different ones of these too. So I like it's kind of a little, uh, you know, kind of a random event that'll happen. So this is kind of a different thing for the coin system. I think it fits this theme uh, pretty well. I'm just gonna spoil a little bit. This game's freaking amazing. Uh, but I'm glad to see somebody really try to change up how the event cards uh, come out. And I'm, this is a very interesting way that it happens. The other cool thing are these brilliant stroke cards. Now you can see there's a special one here. This is a French one. This is called the Treaty of Alliance. And the French don't really get involved until they can play this, but they can't play it right away. And then all of the other factions, including the French, that they've got their own uh, brilliant stroke card. And what happens here? So if you are eligible faction to, uh, to do this, and you're kind of like first up, then you're going to be able to play your brilliant stroke. And they're all the same. Execute two free limited commands and one special activity in any order. Leader must be involved in at least one of the limited commands. And I'll explain the leader here. You can see George Washington. Whoops, sorry. Uh, you have leaders in this game that'll be in spaces. So you can do this and then everybody gets reset to eligible and then you're going to then play the next card. So you can try to kind of time it to basically cancel the card that's about to happen. Not a winter's quarter card, you can't cancel those. But then you can say, okay, I'm the Patriot, boom, I'm gonna play that, and then look, I get to go first on the next card too. So you, you can really uh, try to do that. Now, uh, these can also be trumped here. So this one says the British one. You can see at the bottom, it has the same effect there, but um, British may trump Patriot brilliant stroke all factions to eligible. So what happens is if the Patriots try to do that, then the British can play that, uh, who can also then be trumped, but then what happens is this card will go back into the Patriots' hand, and then now the British one is out. So there's a little bit of an interesting mecha mechanic here to try to get somebody to trump you, and then you can kind of play a little bit later on uh, where, you know, maybe it's a little bit more effective, there's more troops on the board, and, you know, maybe it's a little bit bloodier. Uh, so that's cool. I like that. That's kind of that. You get that little bit of player agency involved where they're like, you know what, screw this. <laughs> I'm going to get in there and try to do this awesome maneuver that maybe Washington or Howe or somebody that was known for. So those are kind of the changes there to uh, the event deck there in the cards. So I did mention leaders, and here you can see there are standees for the leaders. You don't have to use the standees. There are also little uh, tokens like so that you can use for Clinton, for example. Uh, now leaders have, here it is, the leader capabilities card, and they have different abilities that they can do. And now during the winter quarter phase, you may have to actually change leaders. You'll look at the next card that's coming up, and based on the order of the factions there, they may actually switch from one leader to one leader to one leader. Uh, so you can see Gage becomes Howe, becomes Clinton, and then once Clinton's out, that's it. But Washington is the Patriots' only leader. And so wherever these leaders are at are going to give you different cool special abilities uh, based on you know different actions that you take you might actually do a battle and so on so clinton here for example he can actually do uh, skirmish actions one of the british special abilities and that'll actually allow you to move these militia we well, can remove a bonus militia whereas washington here you know you really want him involved with battles because he can really swing the tide 
and also swing sort of the, uh, you know, the support of the people uh, during a battle. So that's another interesting uh, mechanic, and I think it's um, it's appropriate here for this, you know, this time period and this theme. Now, I'm not going to get too into details of the rules, like I said, but let's talk a little bit about the victory conditions for the different factions. Now, this is very, very interesting, and I'll talk more about it in the review in terms of what the implications are for this. So, like I showed you earlier, there is the uh, the total casualties that'll happen. So, in this game, you're going to have battles. You're going to have a lot of battles here between the rebels and the British, and the French will be involved. They're going to be on the rebel side. Uh, the Native Americans are going to be involved. They're going to be on the British side helping out and you're going to have casualties and so let's say we have a battle here and we send a couple of casualties over here to the casualty box and that is going to change now the cumulative here we go cumulative rebellion casualties we'll put that out here and then we'll have the cumulative uh, british casualties so you're going to have to keep track of this and so what you want is for there to be more rebellion casualties than there are british casualties if you are uh, the Indians or the British, and the vice versa, if you're on the rebellion side, you want there to be more British casualties. So you're trying to maneuver your troops and get in such a way that you decimate <laughs> the uh, your opponent. That's a big, big part of the game. Now, if you are the British, you need to have more support by 10 than the rebellion has in terms of their support. So just like the other uh, coin games, let's take a look at here, active oppose and support. So you've got these markers here. So you've got active opposition, passive support, active support and passive opposition. And you put these of course in these different towns and the different provinces and it's multiplied by you know the the uh, the population so if right now let's say this was active opposition this would be worth two to the rebellion to the american side whereas you know a passive is always times one so this will only be worth one so you'll be doing uh terrorism well, in this case propaganda or raids if you're the indians to manipulate that that's your action that's kind of like your terrorist action uh, so you want to have that plus 10. that's something that all of the factions want so the british and the indians want there to be more support than opposition by more than 10. That's one of the victory conditions and they both share it. And the French here and the, uh, the rebellion, they want their opposition to be more than 10 above the support. So they each kind of share those in common. But this cumulative casualty number, only the British cares about that and only the French care about that. The Patriots here and the Native Americans, they don't care about that number. The British, they don't want to be bogged down in this war. The French want the British to be bogged down. They want these people to die because they have interest abroad and overseas that they want the British just mired down in the Americas here. So for the British to win, for example, they need to have their total support plus 10 or 10 more than 10 and then they need this number just to be one higher than the the british casualties the french want the opposite they want the b10 plus on the rebellion and then they want that number just higher now with the native americans here and the the patriots are into is they have these villages here and these are kind of like the bases for the native americans and then we have these cool stars here for the the patriots there they want to have more bases basically than the other now you actually take and subtract the current villages by three so let's say for example we had six villages out we should track that by three so there's actually three so as long as the patriots have more than that number more than three then that is their victory condition of course you always need you know the support to be higher than opposition and all that business but you're actually really competing in this case between the patriots and the native americans for physical space on the board you're trying to actually control and set up you know these outposts and these settlements and these forts uh, to take control of the land in addition to having the support of the people, whereas the British, 
they, they can you can keep the land they they're working with the indians they just want these up this uprising quelled so they need the support of the people and they need to not lose as many troops as the rebellion does so that's a very interesting whole dichotomy there now the last kind of couple of things i want to talk about here are just some of the different actions uh, i could get really mired in this to be honest with you um, so for example let's look at the british commands quickly muster that's kind of like you're uh, you're getting your troops out you're training your troops because you're very much the the coin faction in this particular case uh, this muster you have to put them first into cities and then you can put some start kind of moving out adjacently so the arrival sort of of the british troops is a little bit slow but not as slow as the french now you can see here the french have these different actions here this is before toa and then after toa after toa now if you remember i showed you their other brilliant stroke card here now this one cannot be trumped obviously uh, now they can't basically get in, involved in the war until this condition is met and then you can start to sort of see the french troops come out so this sort of kind of slowly staged arrival of troops uh, you know of course it's very thematic it's not like we're flying them over there on an aircraft carrier uh, so that is a very interesting kind of thing and so what's going to happen with that is a lot of the activity is going to really kind of focus up here in these kind of original uh, northeastern colonies up here and then these southern areas here are not going to be quite as involved uh, especially if you play the long game uh, until a little bit later on but it does kind of allow for some maneuverability as well because there's a lot of sort of uncontested area at least relative to uh, the northeast here which makes for some interesting kind of gambits to maybe strike down here uh you know then the, the whole navy idea comes into play a lot where you're kind of moving troops between the cities and that comes to kind of this garrison which is sort of the movement via uh, lines of communication which there are none here but that's kind of the jumping navally uh, from city to city and then you've got march and battle which i'll talk about in battle in a minute uh, you've got this naval pressure action and the french have a similar action and that's what this little track is here this track is going to go up and down a whole bunch and once the french kind of get involved you'll put out these uh, different squadrons and blockades they'll, they'll be unavailable down here but then you'll load them up up here and these are the guys that can come out so as this naval uh, action moves up and down you're going to start to add and remove blockades from the cities based on the French and British actions there and if you're the British you certainly don't want to let that you know ignore that and get that too high because that can really put a hamper on you uh, before I talk about battles I just want to talk about one sort of example of an action here this is actually special activity this is trade here uh, so you can see here uh, the Indians can do a trade of special activity. It says British chooses an amount or none of resources to transfer to Indians. Uh, if greater than one, then we activate a war party and so on. That is indicative. Now in this game, you cannot just trade resources like you could in the others. It has to be through a card or through an action. Uh, but you're very much coupled uh, together still. And I'll talk about more about that. Now let's talk about battles because this coin game actually has battles. It's even got dice to roll and combat and so on, which is pretty cool. Now it gives you this nice handy dandy battle table here. This is a little bit to take in at first, but once you get the hang of it, like it's really not that cumbersome. I mean, you look at that and you're like, oh no, you know, like, what is this? This is tables. What is this 1982? No, it's not bad at all. So what you're going to do is you're going to total up here your troops and things. So you've got different troops. You've got this militia, uh, which you can activate possibly and add more uh, points to your battle strength. So if you had, uh, uh, you know, if you activate these, you get a little bit of a bonus for every two, uh, or, if you, or if you have two, excuse me, uh, militia. And then you've got different uh, cubes here. These are regulars and the green ones are Tories. And you have these continentals. You might actually even have a French troop in there or militia. You may have a fort in here, which is gonna change things. So you're basically, for the most part, going to count up all your pieces. And each of them is going to be worth one. Uh, you will have to actually pay a resource to be involved. So let's say the rebellion initiated a combat. Now, if the French wanted to add their troops to it, uh, well, then, you know, they'd have to pay and vice versa. If French was involved, then the U.S. would pay. The militia become involved on the defense. Uh, the forts actually count. Uh, if uh, if the, you're the defender in that case, if you're attacking, you don't get to make use of the fort because obviously you've left the fort <laughs> and you're attacking. And then you're going to take all of the different uh, numbers and add them up. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five. 
And so you're gonna divide that by three. So if we had a six one in there, we would get to roll two dice here. And so you, for every basically denomination of three up to nine, you're gonna to get to roll up to three dice. So you add and roll that. And this is gonna be the amount of losses that you inflict on the other side. So in this case, we've got five, but there's also gonna be bonuses here. And so you're just gonna take a quick scan of this. So defender loss modifier. So as the attacker, maybe I rolled five and then so at least half attacking pieces are regular so you would look at that and so yeah that's maybe that's right if you get plus one there uh, at least one attacking piece is underground if you've got a leader some of the leaders give other bonuses here so patriots uh, french defending with washington will actually reduce their losses and so on then you look the other way and then each side is going to take losses now, if you take enough losses, or if you take so many losses that you actually have to remove forts, it gives you an order, so like you remove the French first, and then you remove a Continental, and you kind of go rotating, and then once those are all gone, then you start removing forts and all that. Uh, if you are the winner, and you remove less pieces, and you remove at least two cubes and or, and or a fort, then you're gonna be able to swing, actually, the support, because people are gonna see, oh, you're winning. And then Washington's got that where you can actually double it. And if you think about it, that's kind of a cheap way in terms of the resources to do it. Because normally, just like in you know the other games, like in it, basically got to spend one resource to remove propaganda or terror markers, uh, you know, or raid markers here. So here's a propaganda marker. There's Paul Revere. The name doesn't mean anything, but it's just kind of a historical thing. But so you know, you normally have to spend a resource to remove that, and then start switching the the control of it there. But those battles can be pretty interesting, and you know, you've got to be in a point where you want to, again cause these casualties because remember this casualty number here is going to be very important to the British and the French. So the British want to kind of get in there, mix it up. The French want to get in there, mix it up. The Patriots and the Indians not so much. I think that's all I'm gonna kinda of go over for right now. Let's jump into what I think about it. Okay, so that is liberty or death. And I do apologize for not getting into a lot of detail, but it's it would really take a lot of time to get through it. I played this now four times and I'm just kind of figuring out the game, uh, to be honest with you. It's on the level of complexity, it's not as complex as Fire in the Lake, which is definitely the most complex um, you know, coin game in probably a distant plane. It's probably right around a distant plane complexity. It's definitely more complex than Annie and Abyss and Cuba Libre. But I wouldn't say like remarkably so. You might even be easier to get into this one uh, if you've not played other ones because there's been a few times where, gosh, you know, I played the other one so much like it just kind of triggers. I'm like, oh yeah, that's how this works. And they're like, nope, that's not how it works. You're playing it wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, need to just forget everything that I know. Um, but I think it's a little complex maybe for your first coin game, but I can see this theme appealing to a lot of people. So I think, you know, you'd be able to fight through it. And like I said, I played it four times and, um, you know, I'm still, I'm just now learning like what to do really, like not, not in terms of what I can do, but like why I should do it and when I should do it and all that stuff. Um, so there's that part of it. The one thing I'm going to kind of mention, I'm going to kind of start off sounding negative, but it's my review is really the complete opposite of that, is you've got to be playing with players that I think have played the game before, or at least buy into it a little bit. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, because you are so tied together with the other faction in this game as compared to the other coin games. Uh, now, like I said, you share, if you're, let's say they're Patriots and they're the French, you share the goal of having more opposition than support. You've got to go for that. Now, the French want to have a bloodbath of British. They want the British killed. The U.S. and the Patriots don't care that much they don't want to be killed they don't want to you know be spending their resources they want to control territory they want to get forts out so they can start taking away the land from the native americans that's what they're trying to do and then on the other side you've got the british and the indians that they want the opposition or excuse me the support way ahead of the opposition and the indians want the land and the british want to you know wipe out and make a massacre of the uh, the patriots so you've got to be playing with players that we're going to be able to buy in is that we are going to be a team for as long as possible. I'm going to help you towards your goal because if you don't have that, the game can get kind of, I don't know, it's like, I don't want to say stale, but it gets to the point where it's kind of like, 
you just kind of eke out you know territory and you just kind of eke out what you're doing and it gets very very like you feel like you're kind of being choked a little bit out of the game but if you're playing with players that are a little bit you know they can play trusting a little bit they can play a little bit looser with it and know that okay yeah we really are working together and i think that's why i'm saying you got to kind of buy into it a little bit because the french wanted the americans to i don't know for sure but the game presents it as the french wanted the americans to get the british out of there again they had their own concerns and everything so they should really help the americans get to both of their goals and the americans vice versa and the same with the british and the indians and uh, so i think you want to play with players that are going to buy into that and get into that and play together until you know the very very end when maybe you know we switch sides because there's not really much you do against each other at all the game kind of forces you that way but you can kind of play selfishly a little bit and i think you don't want to do that you gotta you, uh, the game will not be as good but when you do play that way the game is really really cool really really cool and i think that this also lends it to be probably the best with the two players because it like the the factions just blend in that well together they're that you know sort of joined at the hip that the two-player game to me this is the best two-player game out of all of the uh, uh the coin games um, so the other thing is though the other reason that i think it's 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 probably maybe better two-player i don't know I've, I've enjoyed it four player as well too but I, I'm, I, and I've played it as the French player, and if you're playing the long game, it's a little bit of a slow grind. You're like, am I doing anything? You know, like for the first like two winters quarters, okay, you're like your actions are literally like moving forces from uh, available to unavailable to available, and it's like that was interesting. Now for me, I was engaged that whole time, but I could see players being like, that sucked. You know, I just did nothing on my turn. And may, you, there's an action like you literally just like give a guy a resource. You give the patrons the resource. But you're trying to get it set up so that you can play this brilliant stroke card, this uh, this treaty, to get into play. And the patrons got to be empathetic towards you and got to say like, I need you to come in. I, you know, we need to work up. It's kind of like you're working behind the scenes too a little bit too. And this is one of the things, like I only played it four times because you feel like you want to get the French in right away. But I don't know necessarily. I think you need to really like kind of time it in in, in, in a way that uh, if they come in at the right time and just wreak havoc because they get to do all this cool stuff. They muster, they put a rush and bow, and he comes in. And you get to uh, your your navy level goes up one but right away and all this stuff. So you got to really kind of time it to do that. So I think you've got to be empathetic with each other and be communicating. So even though when it comes to your turn as the French, you're not like I didn't get to do anything. You know what I mean? Like you were still in the game. And so you have to be in it with your buddy. You've got to be in it together. And, and like I said, with the other factions as well. Um, so to me, that is the game's, the best part of the game because it's, it's, it's like a team game. It's really invests you into that. Um, but I could I could see play because I didn't expect that going in necessarily because I kind of affect you know, expect like the other ones. Oh yeah, you're kind of together. And the coin games have really kind of done that. I think evolved a little bit over that. Uh, in the last few games where it's like, okay, yeah, you're you're on a team. And it's kind of less or more with the diff different games. And maybe Cuba Libre is probably the other one, although it doesn't play now as well, uh, that the team is, is a little bit more important than the, the individual factions. So anyway, you can, you can really get into that whole aspect of it. So that is kind of my takeaway from the game. I would say that's kind of the biggest uh, crux of it. And I talked a little bit during the walkthrough about some of the different mechanics, kind of how the lines of communication are now the Navy, which is really neat. Um, I talked about the trump cards. Those are really cool. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to mention too, and that's spacing out on me. Uh, let me think here. Oh, the battles, that's right. The battles is, is, uh, is a really, really uh, welcome addition to this game. And that was one thing that I was a little bit interested and curious about because the other coin games don't have a lot of battle. You may have like a little die roll here and there, but it's more of a zero sum thing. I build up enough troops to, you know, activate all your militia, your, your terrorists, and then wipe them out. And there's a lot of jockeying back and forth. And it's more of an area control thing where this is, uh, it still kind of lends itself to that direction. But you can have a little bit of swinginess there, but you want to go in with a little bit of a sure thing uh, in terms of the battles and really try to be in a position where 
okay, I'm gonna you know start slaughtering you a little bit and do enough uh, damage, and you gotta watch out for Washington <laughs> riding around and just doing like, oh cool, we just got all kinds of support because we whooped your butt, <laughs> you know. Um, so I like that aspect of the game, and I'm glad they 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 kind of found a solution. It can be a little bit intimidating, kind of walking through your first battle, though. Uh, but once you you do it, it's 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 butter. It's nothing. Um, yeah. So I think folks are going to not want to play the French. Probably they're kind of like the UAC. Um, you know, where they have a little bit less to do early in the game, but as the game evolves, they get a little bit more interesting. Unless you, you know, have the attitude that I talked about earlier, which I think you should have. Um, and then the British seem to be the toughest to win with. I don't know. It seems like they got everything kind of going against them for some reason. But again, you know, like I said, I'm just kind of learning a little bit still. Uh, the Patriots are very fun to play. you very kind of devious and in, 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 uh, in conniving in a lot of ways, you know, manipulating support here and there. I like that a little bit. And uh, the Native Americans are, are very, very interesting in terms of the different abilities that they can do. Um, you know, with the raiding and plundering um, and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, there's the warpath and skirmish abilities, which are kind of nice too for the the British and the Native Americans, where you can you can kind of sacrifice yourself a little bit and to just kind of cause losses, um, you know, outside of battle, cause casualties outside of battle. So you can kind of ride around as the Native Americans and just kind of be, you know, jack people up, and that's that's cool. I like to do that. So anyway, that's kind of just some general impressions on the different factions. So I would definitely highly recommend this game. I, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like kind of saying, okay, is this the best coin game? <laughs> I think it might be. Uh, I'm not sure because like I said, it's that player attitude is going to bring a lot to this game. I think that's, it's probably most important with this game. Um, but if I was with, the, if I'm with the right group of people, I think this is maybe the best, but I think that it's it's, a, it's the best, but it's also maybe the most dependent on, you know, who you're at the table with. And some games are more or less dependent on that, depending on the game. So uh, just go for that and uh, definitely take a look at it. I did actually see um, that I think the game is completely sold out now, so I apologize, but I'm sure this will be back in print soon and you might still be able to pick it up at a game store itself. But I think it's, it's pretty well spoken for and I, I definitely recommend folks, if you have any interest in this kind of thing at all, uh, definitely take a look at this one. Thanks.